Hey guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a knife video for you. Today we're looking at the Artisan Cutlery Centauri, and this is a really cool knife. I really, really like this design. However, it's made by Artisan, and that's um, an overseas manufacturer. Now, I want to touch on this just a little bit because this question has come up a little bit, and I want to start out by pointing out that I've lived in China, and, and I was doing the ESL stuff over there, uh, and on one occasion that happened that they... the the students in my class asked me what I believed uh, in terms of, you know, do I believe in God? Do I believe in communism? Right. That's where they're trying to eventually go. Do you do you believe in the cause of China? Right. And I had to say, no, I don't. Right. I don't believe communism is morally right. In fact, I believe in uh I believe that humans are created in the nature of God and therefore all humans have value. And the problem with communism is it it teaches and embraces and enacts the exact opposite of that, right? Single human lives do not have any value. It's all about the collective. And so I can't support that morally. Now, to get back to, and by the way, my class, when I, when I talked to one of the students, I asked them, you know, now I've told you what I believe, what do you believe? And without missing a beat, right, this young girl said, I believe in Karl Marx. And so uh, that, that kind of... <laughs> That should wrap up the conversation pretty well for you. The indoctrination is strong. All right. Now, I knew many Christians in China, and uh, part of what I was doing was involved in missionary efforts there. But I'm not going to go into any more of those details because, anyway, I'm not. That's that's a long enough story for now. But I would point out, having gotten that gotten that part of the story out, that I don't believe that by supporting, doing business with someone, you're supporting every single moral stand that they take, or you're giving moral affirmation to that company, right? So there are, there are ethical issues that I have with Walmart, with McDonald's, with Target, with Burger King, with lots and lots and lots of different companies where I, I disagree on their moral stance, okay? I'm a, I'm a Christian, I'm a social conservative, and so anyone who's not in favor of those social conservative values, I believe, is wrong and, and, and actively harming society. OK, so does that mean, you know, in that in that case, I wouldn't be able to do business with almost anyone. Uh, but I don't believe by simply buying a hamburger from McDonald's that I am affirming every single moral choice that McDonald's has ever made. And the same is holds true of Walmart or Canadian Tire or any other corporation that you could think of. And even of individuals, I don't stop, you know, at a, when I go to a yard sale and I'm going to buy something from someone, I don't stop and ask them about all of their moral convictions before I, I engage in my business with them, right? I just buy what I need or what I want. And that's the money that I'm giving that person is not to support whatever particular moral stance they have. It's to, it's to pay for the, the thing that I'm, I'm getting from them. Okay. So that's, that's why uh, I don't believe you can make a case that it's immoral to do business with China or with anyone else who you disagree with on some moral or ethical issue. Uh, the other thing is, uh, there's, there are these partnerships between Chinese manufacturers and American makers. And, you know, here's a good example of it. I like this knife and I buy this knife to support Ray Laconico, not so much to support China or even artisan cutlery. If this was made by someone else, I would still be interested because because I'm interested in Ray Laconico's work. All right, and finally, there's a practical consideration here, and that is, you know, whatever you buy these days, are, it's going to have parts from China. Even if you tried to be the strictest, you know, I'm going to buy only in America 100% of the time, you just couldn't do it, right? You'd be buying things all the time. You may buy a Ford truck, but most of the electronics in that truck are manufactured in China, right? You may buy, and the same is true of virtually anything you could think of. They're, they're manufacturing parts overseas where it's cheap, bring them in, and often they'll have assembly plants here where they're putting stuff together. Um, and, and so there's a lot more going on with that than just saying, well, I'm not buying from China, because the fact is you are buying from China, even if you don't want to. So having gotten all that out of the way, there are a number of other things that I really want to talk about with this knife. Uh, but the first one I wanted to say is, look, this is a really, really attractive design. And that's the primary appeal for me. I think this is a clean, beautiful, interesting design. And I think Ray has done a fantastic job here. Um, and, and Artisan has done a reasonably good job. This is not the, the nicest high-end titanium frame like I've ever handled, right? One of the things is you can feel a, some roughness in the action. Uh, not much, but you can definitely notice that it's there. You don't notice it 
every time because most of the time as you let the knife drop, it's dropping too fast. But if I go really, really slow, I can kind of feel that movement. And that wouldn't be the case, by the way, if this was the standard version. But with the Dama with the Damascus blade, it creates, you know, this little pattern that the lock bar has to travel over. Quick size and weight on this, eight and eight and one eighth inches overall, three and a half inches on the blade, four and 13 sixteenths closed. Okay, so that's the, the closed length in pocket and only 3.6 ounces. So in terms of size, weight, and carry, it's also, this is quite slim. It's under half an inch thick. So this carries really, really well. Uh, and that's, I've got to give some credit here. Now I would consider this more of a gentleman's knife than sort of a tactical or outdoor hard use type of folder. Um, but for size, weight, and carry, it's really, really nice. The other thing I've got to add here is the weight of this or the size of this <laughs> makes the ergonomics quite pleasant. So there's a lot of real estate here to get a hold of this knife to, to deploy that, uh, that front flipper. Okay, let's move on then and talk about the blade. I'm gonna come back to the front flipper and talk a little bit more about it, but you can see this is a Damascus blade. My lighting is not ideal for this, but it's quite attractive. Now, this is not going to be for everybody, but to me, this is a gentleman's knife. And for a gentleman's knife, it means fairly light usage, fairly occasional usage. And so VG10 Damascus is totally fine. It's not going to perform as well as S35VN. But again, if, you, if this is the knife you've got in your pocket for church or for, you know, going for a stroll on the weekend with your wife, something like that, you know, you're not going to probably need to, you know, get into a survival situation and have a knife that's going to hold its edge for the next six hours while you, while you break down some, some firewood or something. All right. It's not going to be that kind of role. By the way, sorry about my voice. Uh, I kind of messed it up a little bit yesterday with uh, my preparing my lessons for the church. Anyway. Back to what we're back to our discussion now that I've uh, mentioned that as well. Uh, in terms of performance on this blade, because it's reasonably thin blade stock, it's only about an eighth of an inch thick, fairly flat, fairly high flat grind. This sort of nice Warren Cliff design here, a bit of a swedge on top. The the cutting performance is very good. You know, I've done a lot of. Uh, this is a knife that will do like that food prep type of stuff. If you're going to slice up apples or carrots or potatoes, any of those hard things that that will split with a thicker blade, this will cut them pretty nicely. It's 25 thousandths behind the edge, which is not crazy thin, but it's thin enough that it does work very, very well. Um, and of course, you will get a little better performance out of this if you went with the S35VN. But I thought, you know what, I don't need this to be, you know, super heavy duty. I don't need extremely good edge retention. So VG10 will be just fine uh, for my intended uses for this knife. Um, from a design, design standpoint, I have to say I do like this a lot. Really, really attractive. I could do without the artisan symbol over here, or if it was smaller, like this little bit of writing here doesn't bother me that much, but look how nice and clean that looks. That I find a little more attractive. This side, I would have been happy if they left this off or even moved it to the other side. Now, I, I get that Artisan's trying to let us know that that they made this. Uh, let's now talk about lockup and deployment. And this is one I want to have a little more discussion about. This, of course, is a front flipper. It is on bearings. It's a titanium frame lock. Uh, the, the action is quite snappy and quick. I do enjoy that quite a lot. It's not the smoothest, all right, frame lock that I've ever had. In fact, you can feel what you can feel is the pattern created by the Damascus. So as this kind of moves, you can feel the the ridges sort of moving under that uh, that detent ball. And so that makes it a little less satisfying. Now that would be different if it wasn't the Damascus blade or if they had paid attention to that in the manufacturing process. All right. Now I do want to have a little bit of, of I do want to pay a little bit of attention to the deployment method here. So I want you guys, I'm going to close some knives and just put them on the table. So let's see here are a few knives with different deployment options, different detent strengths. And all I'm going to do is pick them up and open them. And I want you to sort of pay attention to how quick and easy it is. All right. Pretty intuitive pretty quick and there but now notice though there is a a lapse i've got a regrip so i can flip the knife and now i've got a regrip to do my cutting chore 
Here's a flipper with a little nicer detent, a little snappier detent. It's a little bit faster. Again, though, I've still got to regrip the knife in order to do anything with it. Thumb stud opens. Now, again, I still have to move my hand around in order to deploy the knife. All right, but you could make it maybe an argument that I've moved it a little less distance. Here's another thumb stud deployed knife, the Monterey Bay Hold Guard. And then finally, here's the front flipper. So I've got, I'm going to take this out of pocket. I'm going to hold it like this, deploy it. Okay, let's do one more back flipper. So here is the Steel Will Apostate. Deploy, regrip, deploy. Regrip. So it really doesn't matter. Nearly any folding knife, there's going to be that that moment moment where after you deploy the knife, you've got to change the position of your hand in order to use it for anything meaningful. And it doesn't make a huge amount of difference what the particular deployment option is uh, in terms of speed or even in terms of ergonomics. Like all of those were pretty easy, and with uh, you know a little bit of of practice, I'm quite used to it. All right. Um, I, I, I don't love front flippers. Now this one is, is a little more enjoyable than perhaps this one. The smaller knife here makes it a little more awkward. I've got something all over it. Hold on. There we go. Um, the smaller knife does make this one a little more awkward to open. I will say the action is a little nicer on the Cancept. Um, now, Let's, you know, you know, so, and again, that might be different if you just went with the standard S35VN. Uh, now, let's get into the handle. So this is the uh, Micarta handle. This is also available in carbon fiber. And there may be a full tie version of this. I can't recall. If, if that's the case, uh, let me know down in the comments. I don't, I don't want to promise that and have you go out and look for one. But you can find it in Micarta. You can find it in carbon fiber. And when I recorded this, there were still a couple left on... Uh, White Mountain Knives. So you can go over there, pick one up, save yourself 10% using discount code SHARPSTUFF. It does feel good in hand. All right, I've got to say the ergonomics on this are pretty nice. They're not, it's not super tactical, but as a gentleman's folder, this is pretty darn nice. Uh, and I can, you know, I have done quite a bit of cutting with this uh, and I, I purposely used it around the kitchen a little bit just to see how it would slice like apples and potatoes and that kind of stuff. And it worked pretty darn well. So handle construction is nice. Ergonomics are decent. Big backspacer here. You can see lanyard is incorporated back here. And I like that. It leaves the handle nice and clean. Also, this is a very, very functional pocket clip. Goes in and out of pocket very, very well. And it doesn't create any hot spots. So in terms of the handle construction and the feel in hand, I'm pretty darn happy with it. Let me bring in a couple of comparisons. You know, this is a knife where you're you're buying it primarily because you like the design, right? You're a fan of Ray Laconico and you want that. Uh, and there are a number of knives that are that I've got here that would fall into that category. So here is another knife. I can't remember the designer's name. Actually, it's right here. Oh Young. There we go. Jim O Young. Uh, so that's a, a Jim O'Young design, very striking design from Wee Knives. Here is another Ray Laconico. This is the Monterey Bay Old Guard. Absolutely beautiful. And I think you can sort of see Ray Laconico's style here, where it's just clean and simple and straightforward. And by as far as I'm concerned, by the way, highly attractive. I love that they're just sort of minimal, simple, clean designs. I really, really enjoy that. Uh, let's see, we've got the Chavez 229 Ultramar here. Uh, Liberation, I'm sorry, um, right here. So again, here's the knife you're buying because you're a fan of Ramon Chavez. Uh, this is made by Riot. This is made by Monterey Bay Knives, of which Ray Laconico is a shareholder. Uh, we've got the Sharp Eye Design Evo Typhoon right here. All right, we've got the Dirk Pinkerton uh, Cancept Muir. 
So all of these are examples of something similar to this. These are all knives where the, menu, the, the designer has come up with the design and then um, has had an overseas producer make that. And it's a pretty good deal, guys. It, it, it allows us to get our hands on some pretty well-made stuff from makers that we really, really enjoy. All right. Uh, let's see here for comparisons. I think we've covered most of the stuff that we want to cover in terms of comparisons. I will say that I do enjoy these, these collaborations. It allows, as I said, it allows me to own something from someone that I really, really like in a design that I really, really find attractive. And Artisan has done a good job. Uh, by the way, this is not crazy expensive. I think these are 180 bucks or something like that. So a titanium frame lock from a well-reputed designer for under $200, that's not that bad, okay? And in terms of its function as a, as a good folding cutting tool, absolutely, it's a really, really well done knife. I wouldn't call it hard use. I wouldn't wanna you know, be stuck in a survival situation with this knife necessarily, but, in terms of putting together a really nice EDC cutting tool, I think Artisan has done a fine job here. And, you know, I don't expect to review a whole ton of Artisans, but this one, I found the design so compelling that I went ahead and picked it up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We will talk to you soon.